was June 30th, 2017. And um, in the afternoon, this intense sense of panic just sort of set um, in the division of Bronx Care that I work in, which is the Fulton division. And all of a sudden, you know, it was on every TV screen that there was an active shooter present at our Grand Concourse division, the medical site. Um, and then we thought we had a code silver in our building as well. So, I mean, just panic and chaos. Um, and then everyone just sort of launched into therapist and we all split up, went to every unit, you know, pulled together community meetings um, and just kind of started the work that needed to be done with the patients. Um, but yeah, essentially it was an ex-employee, a doctor that used to work at Bronx Care, um, who came back a couple of years later and um, opened fire on two units in the medical site. I mean, I think the, the most significant feeling that everybody had was violation, right? Like we had been violated in our own home by one of our own, someone that was supposed to be a healer just like we are. So it, it just sh kind of shook everybody up in terms of safety and wondering if it could happen again, you know, would it happen on our, our campus? So there was a lot of hypervigilance, a lot of fear, which then fed into a lot of anger. Um, so lots and lots of processing. And then, you know, that shifting back and forth between making sure that our patients feel safe in our building when we're not sure we feel safe in our building. Um, so, yeah, and it's, I mean, it's still, the pandemic has only added to that sense of, of fear and uncertainty in, in coming to work. Um, but I think the anniversary this year was, was really, it hit everybody harder than it did last year just because of everything else that was going on. did an art directive around safety that was really special and we all got to process and it really like it it shifted everything for us because it put us took us out of the caregiver role for a minute and allowed us to be taken care of and that was really special and we did that um, at the um, art therapy project site so it was good to also get out of Bronx care a few months later we, as we still process with staff, recognize the need to do something much, much bigger on site so that more staff could participate. So we launched a week of healing where we brought in all kinds of different therapies, but the Art Therapy Project, again, was a, a big part of that, hosting daily art therapy workshops where staff could just walk in and participate. Um, and so that was really nice. People that never would have gone to a session off site checked it out you know, and, and really got an understanding of how art making could be helpful at that time. It's huh. a funny question. I, I, I remember, um, especially the, the session that was offsite at the Art Therapy Project, this resistance to let go and not be the director of the program anymore and just be a participant. Um, that's hard sometimes, right? To, to be just sort of equal with everybody. Um, but once I think we all just sort of realized how wonderful the moment was and how much we needed it, um, it felt really good. You know, it was, uh, Lindsay led that, that particular, um, workshop and, you know, she just has a really soothing way about her. Uh, her directives are always really creative, um, kind of on point. Um, so once, once I sort of recognized, okay, let go. You know, you don't have to be the director or the therapist here. You can be taken care of. Um, it was a really wonderful feeling. I think whether it's in-person or telehealth is really dig deep for that creative hat that we all have. Um, for me, it's been really important to sort of get back in touch with found object, objects around the house, recycling type of art making because I couldn't always get art materials to the clients I was working with via telehealth. Um, and that's just a nice reconnect too. It's sort of like getting back to the roots of art making and making something out of nothing, um, forcing yourself to be more creative than pulling out the, you know, the art supplies from the cabinet. Um, and I think that's been really helpful because it also teaches the clients that they can make something from nothing. They don't have to have fancy art supplies. You know, toilet paper rolls, you can do some pretty cool stuff with. <laughs> Um, so that's probably my, 
my best advice. Just be really creative. You know, learn to do more with less if you're in person because it's less stuff to wash and keep clean. Um, and yeah, teach teach our clients that they can use almost anything to make art and be creative and 